The bomb. fire's on your forehead. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> All right, guys. So, per a lot of your guys' requests, you guys want us to get into more detail about the frame geometry. Because last time I talked about it, there's, like I said, we didn't have enough time to get into the detail. So we're gonna get a little bit more detail. Today, we have Swagmaster right here, the sleeper. He's gonna get into more detail because, surprisingly, guys, I could tell you a lot about a lot of the stuff. The frame geometry, I could get into some stuff, but from a rider's point of view, especially from this guy, he's gonna get more in depth. So let's get let's talk about the BMX frame itself. BMX frame consists of the head tube, the top tube, the bottom tube, seat tube. Got the bottom bracket, the seat stay, the chain stay, dropout. Now, some of the little detail the seat stay brace, some of the old school bike you see has a little hole drill right here. That's where they put the, the brakes. And then you got the chain stay brace. Some, some, some of the bikes don't have this. Where's uh, Denim's frame? Denim's frame, like for example, you look at the the Colt Heaven's Gate. See that little brace? This one don't have it. It does. It, that one? That one don't have it. That old Dino doesn't have it. That's why it's called Old Dino. Yeah. That's why they don't have it. And then some of them, like you gotta look right here and see. There's a gusset. Gussets are are made here for strength. There's a top one and the bottom one. Ethan, maybe later on we we'll get in detail why he chose to have it. And then of course you got C clamp. This is a this is the C clamp is brazed on here and it's not just weld the little tabs. So now that you kind of understand a little bit about that, when you guys hear a frame's length, when you talk about length, you're talking about center of the head tube to the center of the seat tube, which is Bente Uno. Hold on. <laughs> It's not like Dora the Explorer. Well, no, Bento, Bento, uh, Bento means Bento. Bento right? u, Udon. What do you say? Uno. Bento Uno. Bento Nudo. Bento Uno. <laughs> you just said come here naked. <laughs> I swear to <laughs> God. <laughs> yeah, what he Bento said? Uno, what he said? 21. 21. Okay? Or, or, hi, Mo. Hi. Where's my Vietnamese audience out there? Just luck. Hi, Mo. Hi, Mo. Mo. Okay. So that's when they talk about the length. So frame top tube would come in a variety of sizes throughout the history. Come like, you know, you could actually get a 20 inch frame, but it has a 18 inch top tube, 19 inch top tube. Typically a flat lander, their, their flat land frames, it's gonna be about 18 inch. So uh, trail frame is gonna be built a little bit longer. My my sorry to my my helper. He went off. He's got he's got sales he need to make. Chop chop. Make that money. Make that money. All right. So now we talk about top two. Now we also talk about the the other length that people always talk about is the chain stayed length. Sometimes they abbreviate chain stay with the S. No, the C S for chain stay. And the chain stay length. Bob the builder took the. Uh, Toss the tape measure, bro. Oh, here, here, I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. So, same thing. Whenever you guys measure, you guys want to measure center to center. So we're going to measure center to the center right here. And it looks like it's about not... Keep in mind, guys, the center of the peg is not the center of the dropout. His center of the dropout is right where 13 and a quarter. Let's see if I'm right. Ethan, what's, what's the rear end of your bike? 13.4. Uh, 13.4. So. But that's slammed, right? Yep. Yes. So, again, we're going to measure center. Center right there. Yep. Drop out. The drop out right here. Measure at about 14 the, the, to the end. So the, the middle of it is about 13.4. So that's center to him. So that's the length. Now, does the seat stay length matters? Not really, not really. 
Some of you guys are gonna argue and say it is, but you know what? Whenever you buy a frame or whenever you order a frame, they always talk about top two and this because this could be all the way here. The, the chain stay could be all the way here and then you have a seat stay that has to meet up with it. But if you wanna change the angle of the seat tube, which is this, it doesn't really change the riding beside the, the sitting position. The next important thing is, now I'm, I'm going into the importance of like the angle and there's no really order that I'm going in. I'm just I'm just going as I go. So the head Talk about the height too. Yeah. So the head tube angle. Well, no, the head tube height first. The head tube height. Very. You know what? Alf, Alf made a really good point. So Alf, come over here. Watch your step. Watch your step. Yeah. So we have the stranger. Sorry, guys. It's all the way up there. I don't have. I'm too short to grab it. So if we look at the head tube right there. That head tube right there, it is. Dude, this thing's gonna fall down Almost and hit me. Six on inches. Almost six inch, right? Sorry guys. We just that's how we do things here. We just do a little bit ghetto. So the stranger head tube is six. This one right here measures at four and a half. So you guys might go, okay, so damn, that's a big difference. Sorta. If you look at all the spacer he has right here, imagine if this head tube was taller. You wouldn't have to have all that spacer. So this one says it's shorter, you have to have all the spacer. Some of you guys might like the length of this, some of you guys might like the real tall one, some might, might not like this. That's where the stranger comes in. I personally like that where the head tube's taller. The taller head tube, in my opinion, is also more, more stable because you have more reinforcement on the forks steer tube. But the angle of that is what I wanna talk about because the, the length of that, it does play some factors, but the angle is more important. I'll let my man here explain in de detail the different types. Okay, you wanna know about head tubes? Let me tell you something. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, to me, I started riding like four years ago, you know, so I'm on that new school shit. <laughs> four years, my ass. <laughs> so, head tubes. To me, a normal head tube is 75 degrees. Doesn't look like anything different, but that's, I guess, how steep it is. Um, new school swag. People do 75 and a half. A little bit steeper, half a degree steeper. That's kind of like your average street head tube geometry. Um, makes it good for like nose manuals and makes it kind of feel a little more tight and squirrely you know so explain which way is which oh yeah so like so 75 is out 75 is a little bit raked out so you know kind of more this mellow way. oh well, yeah. yeah raked out this way mine is 75 and a half a little bit steeper down making it a little more squirrely a little more technical feeling a little bit more responsive feeling you know what i mean that also where your foot is because if the fork is steeper <laughs> If your foot comes on the pedal, it could rub your tire. So that's why people say you're supposed to run smaller cranks. Really? Yeah. I thought it was the back peg. I never heard that. For one both, life. I guess. Okay, okay. So, and so you would say like some of the park guys that are doing a lot of the 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 tail whip, foot jam, stuff like that, and do a lot of no stall. They should be going on like a 74. It's a little bit steeper. 74 no, 74 is, is less steep. steep. It's less. Oh, I'm sorry. The, also, yeah. so they go, so they they go steeper. I've never talked to, talked to a park guy even once. So I don't know what they like. <laughs> but, but right, but in in, in, in theory. Yeah, correct. But right. probably, I know if some people have 76 degree head tubes, even yeah, steeper. It's like, it's like, like that. <laughs> <laughs> Those yeah. dudes love feeble hard 180s though. Well, the one, that's like this, the one that's like this, the one that's like this is it's a result from a car accident. True. Yeah. So that's the angle right there. Okay. But then we also get to the bottom bracket the bottom bracket height. Where's bottom bracket height plays with you? To me, um, I'm sure if you raise this or lower it, it's gonna feel different, but I don't really care. All I care about is that it's high enough to clear when I'm doing crooks and shit. So with my height, 11.8, it's high enough to do a, a double peg without hitting your sprocket, even if you've got a 28 tooth. And you can do a crook grind both ways without hitting your sprocket, even this other way. Um, that's why mine is 11.8.
So it's got max clearance. But, but, what, but what about like, besides grind wise, is there a benefit from the bottom bracket height? Is in like, like trick wise, like responsive wise? I have no idea. Manuals, none of that. I have zero idea. You have zero, but. All I care about is not hitting my sprocket. Okay, but so Alf, your opinion, you're only care the bottom bracket height. Do you prefer high or low and why? I prefer a mid, because if it's lower, I feel like it's more stable. You're closer to the ground. Yep. I feel when it's higher up, it kind of like, it also elevates you on the bike. You're going to be hovering a little higher. Yeah. So like, I would have something like middle, like probably a little tiny lower than his, because I don't do cricket grind, so. So with, but, so so then you guys, you guys would, would you guys agree that if you, if you guys, you viewers out there is going to shop for a frame, bottom bracket height might be somewhere like below you know, the, the the priority. I bet half the people haven't even thought about it. Yeah, I think 11.7 or 11.8 is like normal nowadays. Yeah. Now your chain stay length, that's more important to you. Chain okay. stay length so is let's talk about very chain stay length. important. So a lot of people like to have the 13 inch or even like the 12.7, 12.5, the short ass back ends because it's good for street technical riding. Um, it is like super twitchy, super responsive like that, but it's so short that it feels like way too easy to loop out. It feels like when you're doing a manual, you've got no stability because it's just such a small balance point. You're really hanging on. Um, I really notice a difference in like backwards manuals or like a backlash because there was a shorter back end. It's way easier to loop out and fall on your ass versus the longer back end. You've got way more forgiveness and way more of a balance point back there. I think it was really interesting. Like um, he told me a story once, and he, he told a couple people a story about uh, him and Devin, about how Devin explained how he rolled back backward on the bike, really, really stable without being twitchy. What were you? That oh story. no. Well, Devin never told me this, but. I just seen Devin Smiley, right? He's the best in the world at backwards manuals, no contest. And he's been the best for like years now. And I'm pretty sure it's because he rode for Fly when they only had like 14 inch back ends. So he got the long ass, you know, rear end on his bike. When he does that backwards manual, he's got so much forgiveness and so much room to pull back or go forward, so much balance point that it unlocked it for him, I think. But I don't really know, because now his frame's like 12.7 and he's still the best, so. <laughs> well, I, no, no, but I just thought it was interesting when I heard you say that, and it did make sense, guys. I mean, from, you guys you guys are hearing from, from both sides of it, where I'm, I'm, I'm the guy wrenching on the bike, I understand a little bit, but you're also, you're looking at the guy that's behind the handlebar, he understands. So it's mutual where he goes, you know what? It's the length of it that makes it a lot more stable, because the shorter the wheelbase, the more twitchy. So it only makes sense that when you're rolling backward and you're not you're not real twitchy, you're stable because it's a little bit longer. It does make sense. So that is the advantage of that. Okay, but then uh so then the seat tube angle, not really, right? Yeah, I mean you got a seat tube angle here, here. It doesn't play a factor in. All you know is there's a good frame, go buy one. I know this is the most I've gotta take this. <laughs> Ooh, flat tire. It's a, it's a tele what telemarketer. Size? It's a telemarketer. No. Tube. <laughs> the other thing we want to talk about is the bottom bracket height. The bottom bracket height. Let me take this thing down. So, actually, it's probably better you guys see it over here. Bottom bracket height. You measure from the ground to the center. Now, the importance of this is. There's certain frames, huh? <laughs> you said Mark Burnett. So the, the low bottom bracket, it's more stable. You're more stable. The higher the bottom bracket is, the more responsive. For example, we, we asked Ethan, what who has a low bottom bracket? And he said, the SE bikes, all the big wheel bikes. So the lower the bottom bracket is when you go up, pop up and do a wheelie, it's lower so it's easier to scoop up the bike and keep it more stable. Now, I'm not a wheelie guy. I'm not wheelie king. Ethan is. You should watch that guy do wheelies. So he's the one that gave us that, that tip saying, you know what, bottom bracket heights low, super easy wheelie. So. And also if it's higher, it's out of the way for grinds. That too. So if you, well, but a lot of the guys that ride streets, 
They don't they don't have a really high bottom bracket. They can, they kind of have a medium one. All the park guys, they have a higher bottom bracket because they're doing a lot of those tech tricks. That guys, that doesn't mean that you have to be a park guy in order to buy a, a bike with a high bottom bracket. You don't. It's whatever's best for you. But those are the information for you. The length of the chain stay that helps you with manuals. That helps you with wheelie. That also helps you with, if, if you have a real short rear end, for you to bring it up to about this much, let's say this is your sweet spot. But let's say on Max's bike, he's not here right now. The back end of his is on a Colt 2, no, he's on a, a shorty now. It is 12.8 if I'm correct. So he would have to, when he pulls up, it's only it's only a little bit more yeah. versus somebody has a longer back and he has to pull up more. So when you bunny hop or when you manual, it just takes a little bit less effort on a shorter one and it's more responsive, more twitchy. Another factor in the frame is you hear them talk about it, it's a standover. So I don't that's really not that important to a lot of people, but just in case, we're just gonna throw in there. It's a standover. So the way they measure the, the the standover is they, for some reason, they don't they don't measure center to center like they do with a top tube or a dropout. They measure the C tube from the top of the bottom bracket to the top. It's the standover. I don't know why they measure like that, but it is what it is. But that's the standover. The advantage of the standover, in my opinion, is the clearance. It's for telewhips. It's clearance and stuff like that, and it's. I mean, I can't tail whip, Alf can't, Alf says for tail whip. I kind of don't understand it because when you tail whip, you're kicking the bottom here and you're talking about that much, how much of, of the, the leg do you stick up? But if I you're a tall guy, yeah. if you're a tall guy, I'm sure it helps a little bit. So, but you're the guy that could tail whip. Those are some of the features. Um, all right. All I know is, <laughs> this is the most aesthetically pleasing bike because of the 9.25 C tube height. It looks good. Um, the head tube, 75 and a half. Steeper, better. <laughs> Clearance with the bottom bracket height. And the back end is 13.4 slam. It's still short enough to get down. It's long enough to be stable. You'll never slip out of your crooked grind. You could do backwards manuals all day without looping out. Very forgiving. Um, also, it's purple pretty dope okay so you you heard it there you heard it from the man himself I'm gonna close it out by saying you guys are gonna go out there and buy a frame this holiday you know what do do your research but ultimately what comes down to it is what you're comfortable with and what you're down with not just because what I said what Ethan said what Alfred said, or the homie up the street saying you got to get this you got to get this you know what you're this height you should ride this there's really no definitive equation to that you know so ask around try to try to write a couple people by get the feel of it give us a call give us a shout we'll help you out subscribe to alfredo hey one last thing before i let you guys go apparently a lot of you guys are not watching the videos and paying attention because you're making the same mistake you guys are coming in here going foo i watch it over and over and i still can't put the sprocket on Foo, I don't understand what you, you know, like I put on the chain, it doesn't work. Guys, watch it, study it, it's there. Okay, so if you guys want me to get more detail, just just request it. You're the, you the UPS here. man. So we're here. The, um, I don't have, you gotta have to buy come back. Buy my frame, but not for Christmas, because yeah, it's sold I, I out, got, but in want, January, we, use we, the Christmas we, money we got to the buy weed, it. We got the weed, we could trade you. You got uh, all right. <laughs> That's where I'm gonna wrap this video. <laughs> like, share, comment, subscribe. Don't eat the jalapenos; they will make your forehead bleed. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs>